What's up, guys? So it's Wednesday. It's SRV Woodshed Wednesday, but I had a different uh, I had a different idea for today's video. Uh, An SRV pedal board. Very simple, you know, just have the staples. I'm going to be taking inspiration from the, uh, the 1985 Tone Tokyo Show. That was uh, my favorite tone. You know, your mileage may vary on Stevie's tone, but... I really love that. And luckily, there was a Japanese photographer around that time that took a bunch of pictures of Stevie's guitars and amps and his uh, his pedal board. And you can see that pedal board picture here. Now, there's some debate on how he would run the Tube Screamer and the Wah Wah. If you look really close at this picture, we're going to dissect in a minute, you can pretty much make it out. You know, you kind of have to use your best judgment and understanding and follow cables for the most part. This is going to be a, a two-part video. So part one, we're going to build it. We're going to make sure everything's working. We're going to get some sounds out of it. Part two, I'm going to give you an explanation into how he would use what he was, what he had on the floor. Great, granted, it was minimal. With the rig he had on the ground, he found what worked for him. And he also found some little hidden tricks inside there you can do. We're going to be using uh, non-true bypass pedals, which you know back then. I mean, he had a, a TS9 and an old Vox Wawa, and he had a looper. But for... For guys that <clears throat> play that style with that volume, with those amps, um, that can kind of come into your favor if you know what you're doing. So I'll bring that picture up from 1985. Uh, we'll look it over. We'll see what he has going on. We'll follow some wires and we'll see the order of the pedals, so to speak. And then uh, we'll go out and build it. And then uh, we'll just try to get some sounds on it. And like I said, part two is going to give an explanation of how he may have used some of that stuff. You can really get a great idea of what he was going for, what he was doing with certain pedals at certain times. So yeah, we're going to look at that picture right now. Okay, guys, so here is the photo in question. I have it blown up on my desktop, so just excuse the, you know, shoddiness. I'm just trying to explain a few things. Now, keep in mind... Uh, as we all probably have, I've spent entirely way too much time for one person's life with this photo. But here's what I've come up with. So we have his lead coming in here from his guitar. That would make sense because here and there is your bypass. This one is going out to the amp as you can follow it here. So we have those two determined, okay? Now, if we follow this one, this one comes out, loops here goes into the Tube Screamer first. That makes sense. Now, we have one here that we can't really make out, but we have to almost assume that that is this lead going into the Wawa here. That can also be this lead coming out of the Wawa here. So it's probably folded up underneath the Wawa and going back in as the return to complete the loop. Now, we have to understand that that has to be the way it's working because you can clearly see pictured here, the first pedal to hit the loop is the TS9. So coming out of the TS9, like I said, he's, he's traveling over here somewhere. They have it on the floor. You know, there is another picture of this. Let me see if I can bring it up. So yeah, like I said, here's the other picture. It doesn't really give you much telltale signs. You see the wah getting plugged in here and you can't really follow it. Maybe it comes around, maybe it's plugged in there and we're just not seeing it, it's off camera. But we definitely know that he is hitting the tube screamer first. So we're gonna go with that because that makes the most sense as far as the way, or what we, what we can decipher as far as these cables being run. This is all the also the other photos from that. Now, I don't believe this was the actual Tokyo show. I think this was from the night before. Kind of blurry, kind of pixelated. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to do this quick, but you can see the photo there. Some JBL speakers over there in the Vibroverbs. Really, really cool. Uh, Leslie, and there's the pedal board, some strings and picks. So yeah, we're gonna go make a pedal board and we're gonna see what we can do. All right, so first things first, we want to get ourselves a designated work area. I like to call this the kitchen table or a workbench. Um, I destroyed my uh, end table to get something just black and simple. No big deal. An early 80s black label, early serial number TS9. 
with a really, really special chip in here. Uh, the chip Stevie was quoted to use in 85. So we're really getting close as far as trying to nail some stuff. Not necessarily nailing tone because nobody ever will, but just making an accurate pedal board. I mean, we have the actual chip that was documented in his Tube Screamer. Analog Man's got a great write-up on that. There's the Unicorn. The MXR Loop Selector. I think it was set up like that in the photo, so we'll use that as well. Old Vox Wawa. Now, this is a, a, a script Clyde. Um, from, uh, rumor has it, the Stevie favored the trash cans. But, um... I also became friendly with somebody who was able to confirm that in 1985, in the Montreal shows, Stevie was using a script. So we're just going to go with that because it sounds good. It has a little more bass, not so trebly as like a Hendrix uh, tone or something like that. So we'll use this as well. Random line cables. And just a little bit of Velcro. Never leave home without it. We're just going to take a little strip of Velcro. put it on each one of these because I don't I don't necessarily like velcro on my pedals so this is just for the show this is just to get it to stick and not fall off 27 times while I'm okay so we start there boom same thing for the tube screamer I want to protect that serial number the loop there we go and we're gonna hit the two screamer first like we talked about okay. coming out of that we're gonna go into the wah yeah that's why I didn't want to put golf on anything so I wanted to go like that out of the wah Maybe we'll do something like this. Really make it messy, just like Stevie did in that photo. I think that's Donnie Opperman that made that uh, pedal board for Stevie. Way back when. So there you go. As of now, I mean, essentially, we just built it. You know what I mean? That's straightforward. We are going to have our original clean signal pass through. Then we're going to hit the two screamer first in the loop. Out of the two screamer, we're going to go into the wah. We're going to come out of the wah, go back home. So this is basically putting the pedals in signal, taking the pedals out. You guys out there too, let a brother know what you're using as far as patch cables because this is just ah, too much. I'd like to maybe build a pedal board one time, once and for all, to have just my sounds on it. So, if you guys could help me out with some suggestions down at the bottom, that would be great. I would really, I would look forward to it and I would appreciate any kind of uh, insight because, you know, I, I take into consideration all your guys' uh, tips as well as, you know, my own. So, yeah, let me know. So we've confirmed that our bypass signal, this is, you know, I'm plugged straight, just guitar, straight into there. This is going out to the amp. We confirmed that that works. So if, essentially if we hit this. Turn the volume down for a second so we don't kill the neighbors. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's working too. Now, maybe I can demonstrate. So that would be out of the signal. That's out of the loop. You get this. to assemble something pretty quick uh, to kind of simulate what he had going on there in 85 in those photos. 
Um, the only thing that wasn't in there was the Leslie switch. Obviously, I didn't need to put that in there. I wasn't really using the Leslie. Um, and then that MXR looper is just, I'm either going to try to clean the switch or just substitute another looper that will essentially work the same way, maybe the Keeley looper or something like that. So in part two of the video, I'm going to, you heard some tone clips, but I'm going to explain how he was, he was really using it and, and maybe, uh, you know, when I can really crank the amp, because right now it's early here where I am, so they're, they're not really cranked, but I want to be able to crank the amp and show how little he was dependent on the Tube Screamer. It wasn't really, you know, a pedal. It was just coming from his amp, something that I've been trying to push forever. Like when everybody asks me questions about tone, it's it's really the amps being pushed. But I'm going to be able to demonstrate some of that uh, in part two of this video. You know what I mean? So here's part one the pedal board build and the actual dissection, how we went about putting it together and some tone clips. Part two will be an explanation and really showing how he was using it as a player on the floor, what he had in front of him, how he was getting his certain sounds and kind of using uh, the non-true bypass pedals to his advantage, using the wah-wah in conjunction with the Tube Screamer, using the Tube Screamer, vice versa, you know what I mean? So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, if you're into Stevie or into vintage guitars or vintage pedals or some mods, please hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell. Also, any likes, comments, uh, suggestions on cables, like I was asking, um, I would really, really appreciate that. If anybody's looking for like some lick lessons, maybe via Skype, get in touch with me in my email down below as well. Um, and my strings, I've had a couple of inquiries about uh, looking for my signature set of strings. Just email Kurt Mangan direct and they'll be able to help you out. Thanks guys, this is part one. Part two is coming next week. I really appreciate uh, your support and all the feedback. You guys have a good one. Have a good rest of the week and we'll see you next week with part two of this video. Peace.